Welcome to the video book summary of 10% Happier by Dan Harris. This book was published in 2014 and weighing 256 pages. After having a nationally televised panic attack, Dan Harris knew he had to make some changes. A lifelong non-believer, he found himself on a bizarre adventure involving a disgraced pastor, a mysterious self-help guru, and a gaggle of brain scientists. Eventually, Harris realized that the source of his problems was the very thing he always thought was his greatest asset, the incessant, insatiable voice in his head, which had hyper-competitive business, but had also led him to make the profoundly stupid decision that provoked his on-air freakout. Eventually, Harris stumbled upon the effective way to rein in that voice, something he always assumed to be either impossible or useless, meditation. A tool that researchers suggest can do everything from lower your blood pressure to essentially rewire your brain. 10% Happier takes readers on a ride from the outer reaches of the neuroscience to the inner sanctum of network news to the bizarre fringes of America's spiritual scene and leaves them with a takeaway that could actually change their lives. This book is available on Amazon with the link in the description if you like what you hear. So without further ado, I bring you the summary of 10% Happier. What's the point of meditation? According to Dan, it makes you 10% happier. And it's like any skill. It's something that can be developed through practice. It quietens the voice in your head, makes you appreciate the present more, decreases your anxiety over the past and future, and makes you a better person. Eckhart Tolle on the ego. Our entire lives, he argued, are governed by the voice in our heads. The voice is engaged in the ceaseless stream of thinking. Most of it negative, repetitive, and self-referential. It squawks away from us at the minute we open our eyes in the morning until the minute we fall asleep at night, if it allows us to sleep at all. Talk, talk, talk. The voice is constantly judging and labeling everything in its field of vision. Its targets aren't just external. It often viciously taunts us too. The ego is never satisfied. No matter how much stuff we buy, no matter how many arguments we win, or delicious meals we consume. The ego never feels complete. The ego is constantly comparing itself to others. It has us measuring our self-worth against the looks, wealth, and social status of everyone else. The ego thrives on drama. It keeps our old resentments and grievances alive through compulsive thought. Perhaps the most powerful Tolian insight into the ego was that it is obsessed with the past and the future. At the expense of the present, we live exclusively through memory and anticipation, he wrote. We wax nostalgic for prior events during which we were doubtless ruminating or projecting. We cast forward the future events during which we'll certainly be fantasizing. But as Tolly pointed out, it is quite literally always now. Make the present moment your friend rather than your enemy, because many people live habitually as if the present moment were an obstacle that needed to be overcome in order to get to the next moment. And imagine living your whole life like that, where you always, this moment is never quite right, not good enough because you need to get on to the next one. This is continuous stress. On Mark Epson, Epson totally nailed my habit of haunting around the plate for the next bite before I tasted what was in my mouth. As he described it, I do not wait to experience the fading of flavor, the colorless, cottony pulp that succeeds the spectacular burst over my taste buds. At best, I could understand it. The Buddha's main thesis was that in the world where everything is constantly changing, we suffer because we cling to the things that won't last. My favorite Buddhist catchphrase, however, was the one they used to describe the churning of the ego, monkey mind. I've always been a sucker for animal metaphors, and I thought this one was perfect. Our minds are like furry little gibbons, always agated, never at rest. The doctor's theory was that, in modern life, our ancient fight or flight mechanism was being triggered too frequently, in traffic jams, meeting with our bosses, etc., and that this was the contributing epidemic of heart disease. The final step, non-identification meant seeing things just because I was feeling angry or jealous or fearful. That did not render me a permanently angry or jealous person. These were just past in states of mind. What mindfulness does is create some space in your head so you can bond rather than simply react. 
In the Buddha's view, you can't control what comes up in your head. It all arises out of the mysterious void. We spend a lot of time judging ourselves harshly for things that we had no role in summoning. The only thing you control is how you handle it. The pursuit of happiness. This, as Joseph has pointed out on the retreat, is the lie we tell ourselves our whole lives. As soon as we get the next meal, party, vacation, sexual encounter, as soon as we get married, get a promotion, get to the airport, check in, get through security and custom, a bouquet of Auntie Anne's cinnamon sugar sticks will really feel good. We live so much of our lives pushed forward by these if only thoughts, and yet the itch remains. The pursuit of happiness becomes a source of our unhappiness. Praise Allah, but also tie your camel to the post. In other words, it's good to take a transient view of the world, but don't be a chump. Striving is fine, as long as it's tempered by the realization that, in an atropic universe, the final outcome is out of your control. And if you don't waste your energy on variables you cannot influence, you can focus much more effectively on those you can. When you are wisely ambitious, you do everything you can to succeed, but you are not attached to the outcome, so that if you fail, you will be maximally resilient, able to get up, dust yourself off, and get back into the fray. That, to use a loaded term, is enlightened self-interest. What matters most? That's a wrap on 10% Happier by Dan Harris. Look back on our channel for previous video book summaries and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, hashtag bestbookbits. This summary is from the website natalielison.com. If you like the video and want to buy the book, click the link in the video description to purchase from Amazon. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two. Have a great day.